Welcome back, grade 10 math students. This is our second video tutorial. Um, we're going to continue with describing the transformations of parabolas in vertex form. So our last tutorial was investigating the transformations of parabolas. Now we're going to work on describing the transformations if we're given the parabola in vertex form. First off, let's review what the vertex form of a parabola is. It's, if we remember, it is y is equal to a x minus h squared plus k. And in our investigation, we learned how altering the values of a, h, and k transform the parabola. Okay, so let's just quickly recap how those values do transform the parabola. We learned that k is responsible for the vertical translation. If k is greater than 0, the problem moves up. If k is less than 0, the problem moves down. It moves up or down on the y-axis, okay? So greater than 0 moves up, less than 0 moves down. We also learned that h is responsible for the horizontal translation. If h is greater than 0, the problem moves to the right. If h is less than 0, the problem moves to the left. We also have to keep in mind that we learned that for the equation y equals x minus 7 squared, in the investigation we saw that that moved to the right. The h value for this equation is actually positive 7, okay? Because if we look back to the vertex form of a parabola, it's y equals a, we're just going to look at the h value for this amount, x minus h squared plus a k value. So if we put in, if we replace h with the value of positive 7, positive 7 is an h value greater than 0. So if we replace it with positive 7, it'll appear like this, x minus 7 squared. That's why this h value of 7 transforms the graph to the right. Okay, it shifts it right 7 units. If our h value was negative 7, for this equation here, x plus 7 squared, our h value is actually negative 7. Because if you think about it, if we replace our h value with negative 7, two negatives beside each other, so if we subtract a negative, that changes to a plus. So that gives us x plus 7 squared. Get rid of that second bracket there because that looks kind of confusing. There we go. So you can see our h value of negative 7. Negative 7 is less than 0. We have we plug in h to equal negative 7. Our equation results like this as x plus 7 squared. And it moves to the left 7 units. If that's unclear or you need clarification on that, please go back and watch the investigation of parabolas part 2. And I go more in depth explaining um, how h shifts the parabola left and right. Make sure we're clear on that um, so that we can move on and continue without getting stuck describing the horizontal tran transformations. We also learned how A affects the parabola. Um, a uh, is responsible for the vertical stretch or compression. If we have a positive A value, so if A is greater than 0, the parabola is going to open up as in all three of these. Okay? If a is less than 0, the parabola is going to open down, as in these three parabolas. So if we have a negative a value, it's going to open down. What we say, how we describe the transformation when we have a negative a value is that it's a reflection in the x-axis. We think of this x-axis as a mirror, and the parabola is flipped across the mirror. That's called a reflection in the x-axis. Also, we discovered that there's a vertical compression when the a value is between negative 1 and 1, but not equal to 0. So any number um, that is less than 0, but greater than negative 1, or greater than 0 and less, to, less than 1, uh, if any of those numbers are an a value, it will compress vertically the parabola, so it will appear wider. If we have an a value greater than 1, or less than negative 1, so an a value of like 2, 3, 4, or negative 2, 3, and 4, those will all stretch the parabola vertically. Like this equation here, y equals negative 2x squared, and like this one here, y equals 2x squared. So those will be stretched vertically, which will make them narrower. Okay, so that's a review of everything. 
that we learned in the investigation. If we put this all together, we can see that, remember our equation is y equals ax minus h squared plus k. Good. Just a quick summary. Um, a is responsible for the vertical stretch. Stretch or compression. Isn't that lovely penmanship? Good, I got it all in. Vertical stretch or compression. Good. H is responsible for the horizontal translation. And K is responsible for the vertical translation. Good, so that's what all three of them do. Now, why is it useful to have the equation in this form? Because if you think about it, let's take a look at the graph of y equals x squared again. If we have an h value of positive 3, the problem will move 3 to the right. 1, 2, 3. And let's say we had a k value of 2, it would move up 2. So now let's take a look at where this vertex is. So we had an h value of 3 and a k value of 2. Okay? So the problem moved 3 to the right and 2 up. What's that coordinate of the vertex now? It's 1, 2, 3 on the x-axis, 2 on the y-axis. So the vertex is equal to 3, 2. Aha! So at this point, this is when you should say, ah, this is why they call it vertex form. When it's written in vertex form, we can easily see what the vertex is. So the vertex of a parabola that is in vertex form is simply h, k. So whatever the h value is, is the x coordinate of the vertex. Whatever the k value is, is the y coordinate of the vertex. And we remember that the axis of symmetry is the vertical line that goes through the vertex. And it is always x equals whatever the x value of the vertex is. To generalize it for all problems in vertex form, our axis of symmetry is x is equal to h. So whatever our h value is, that's what our axis of symmetry is going to be. So you should have all of this filled out on your placemat. In the bottom right section, usefulness of vertex form. The vertex of a problem vertex form is hk. The axis of symmetry is x equals h. Now we have our placemat completed for um, what the values of a, h, and k do and the usefulness of the vertex. So we can have this handy whenever we're working with parabolas in vertex form so we can reference it and make sure we have the concepts down. Good. So now let's move on and start practicing describing the transformations of parabolas. So this question asks us, what is the vertex? axis of symmetry and describe the transformation compared to y equals x squared for this parabola here, for y equals negative x plus 3 squared. First off, let's just write the general vertex form equation in the top here so we can reference it. y equals a x minus h squared plus k. So before we can say what the vertex is and the axis of symmetry and describe the transformation, we should try and figure out what the a, h, and k values are for this equation here. So this equation is actually, when we see a negative and then no number beside it, we have to remember that there's actually a negative 1 there. Okay? So we have negative 1, x plus 3 squared, and then we don't see anything after that. So there is, in fact, no k value. So it's actually plus 0. So if we compare these two equations, we can look, try and figure out what our a value is. Our a value is negative 1. Now let's try and figure out what our h value is. So remember, it's x minus h. Okay? So this is in place of the h, but you'll notice this equation is in the form x plus 3. 
So that means that our h value is actually negative 3. To review why that is, if I have y equals x minus h squared, if I plug in an h value of negative 3, so y equals x minus negative 3, squared, it'll appear as y equals x plus 3 squared. And that is precisely what we have here. So that means that our h value must be negative 3. Okay? So if you need to go over that any further, make sure you go back and watch the tutorial on investigating the transformations again, okay? H is the trickiest concept here. So I'll just get rid of all, all of this. So we can go back to the question. Good. So, but so far we've determined that um, our A value was negative 1. Our H value was negative 3. Now our k value, if we look at our, yeah, the k values, k is, in this case, 0. So we have a k value, k equal to 0. Okay, so we have our h and k values. Now we should be able to describe the transformation of the parabola. We should be able to determine the vertex and the axis of symmetry. We remember that the vertex of a parabola in vertex form is just hk. So vertex is equal to hk. In this case, h is negative 3, k is 0. Therefore, our vertex is negative 3 and 0. Good. Now, our axis of symmetry, axis of Symmetry, I'll just short form it there. So we figured out our vertex. Okay, our axis of symmetry is x equals h. We remember that from our rules. What is the h value in this instance? It's negative 3. Our axis of symmetry is x equals whatever the x value of the x coordinate of the vertex is. Now we want to be able to describe this transformation. If we're going to be able to describe this transformation, we have to look at our h and k values once again. I'll describe it in red here. So the description of the transformation, because a is negative, it's reflected in the x-axis. In the x-axis. Make sure that's how you describe a problem that's being flipped upside down. You say reflected in the x-axis. It's also when we have a negative h value, that means it moves to the left. So shifted three units left. And our k value is zero, so it's not moving up or down. So that's our final description of the parabola. Of sorry, of the transformation of the parabola compared to the parabola y equals x squared. Okay? Good. Let's try another example. For this example, let's write down our a, h, and k values. I'll, I'll once again write the general um, vertex form equation at the top here so we can reference it. So our general equation is y equals a x minus h squared plus k. With this equation,